Hey everybody, I'm Evan Hammonds for Bloodhorse.com and welcome to the after 4th of July edition of After the Wire, where there was some great racing over the weekend from New York to New Jersey to Florida to sunny Southern California. And it was a big weekend for Florida breads and a not so big weekend for bridge jumpers. And we'll get to that. First, we're going to start in uh, California and the Hollywood Gold Cup. Now, he wasn't exactly facing top-notch grade one company in the Gold Cup. He didn't dazzle us with his speed or quickness over the cu cushion track. But we sure do love the way Game on Dude runs. Running with action that is smooth as silk under Chantal Sutherland, Game on Dude showed us why we believe he's the best horse in training in North America by winning the Gold Cup by a length and a half over stablemate Richard's kid. Now, what was interesting was it was another six plus links back to Kettle Corn in third. Now, the best thing about his 204 time for the mile and a quarter was the fact he was running a mile and a quarter, the, the classic trip for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Most of the other handicap races throughout the year these days are at a mile and a 16th or a mile and an eighth. Now, it's never too early to start talking about the Breeders' Cup and with the win in the Californian a couple of weeks ago and now the Hollywood Gold Cup in his back pocket, Game On Dude has to be the pro tem leader for the Classic. Now, the Breeders' Cup is at Santa Anita this fall, Dude's backyard, which gives him an edge even over the other handicap runners in New York and Kentucky and elsewhere, they seem to be posting better speed figures. Now, remember last year when Game On Dude had them all beat, save for the closing Drosselmeyer in the Classic at Churchill Downs. Calder held their summit of speed July 7th and Musical Romance dazzled us with a nice score in the Grade 1 Princess Rooney, while Fort Loudon and Trinneberg thrilled us in the carryback. A true stalker, Musical Romance was able to sit off a 21-4 opening quarter, followed by a 23-1 quarter before advancing to the lead to top second choice Nicole H. by a half length. It's a nice hometown win for trainer Bill Kaplan and Adam Lazarus Pinnacle Racing. Now, the carry back was a different kind of race with two top sprinting three-year-olds slugging it out. Now, while it may have been a bit of a surprise that the 9-5 Fort Loudon topped the 1-5 Trinneberg, there should have been no surprise that it was nearly 14 lengths back to the third place finisher. Fernando Hara, who was aboard Fort Loudon, voiced his confidence in toppling Trinneberg and then went out and did it in a knockdown drag out fight. The two ran a 22 flat opening quarter, followed by a 22 and three second quarter, which explains why the 13 and one final eighth was a little slow. Regardless, the two put on quite a show. Now Fort Loudon is out of lots of talc who we all remember as a hard-knocking New York bred who cut through stakes at the Big A in Belmont in the mid-90s like a hot knife through butter. Fort Loudon is also a half-brother to Sexy Stockings, who is the dam of multiple grade one sprinter mile type Jackson Bend. In New York, somebody or some people lost a lot of money bridge jumping into the show pool in the victory ride stakes, which was run before the Suburban. Unbeaten Agave Kiss is unbeaten no longer, and her fade in the lane brought up show prices of $61, $18.60, and $25.60. There's two old racetrack axioms in play here. There's no such thing as a sure thing, and they all get beat. Now, Mucho Macho Man beat them all in the Suburban, and he earned a pretty lofty 108 buyer speed figure to boot. It was, it was tough to follow along with him as he prompted through the pace behind a quick trickmeister with three quarters run in 23 flat, 22 and three, and then 23 and four. And then he ran a final eighth of uh, 12 and three. It's pretty tough to catch. Now, Hymnbook closed best of all, but when you go back and look at the replay, he's not really gaining that much on, not really gaining that much on Mr. Mucho. Now, for as good as he looked at Gulfstream, he looked rough in a third place finish in his previous start in the Ali Sheba Stakes at Churchill. Now, Mucho Macho Man looked awesome at Belmont. Consistency is the only thing holding this guy back from true stardom. Now, the stars this weekend were all from the Sunshine State. A shout out goes to the Florida Breds. Mucho Macho Man, Victory Ride winner Emma's Encore, Musical Romance, and Fort Loudon. I'd like to thank everybody for watching After the Wire. Come back to uh, bloodhorse.com and see us next week. For Evan Hammonds, thanks.